Hello friends, welcome back to my channel Behind the Truth, let's coming to the point. On July 16, 1945, at 5.30 am, a nuclear bomb codenamed Trinity was tested in New Mexico desert. Led by J. Robert Oppenheimer, the explosion exceeded expectations, reaching 15 to 20 kilotons of TNT. The blast's heat evaporated a steel tower and its shockwave was felt 160 kilometers away. The mushroom cloud soared 12 kilometers high. Witnessing this, Oppenheimer quoted the Bhagavad Gita. Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. Stay tuned to learn how he knew about it. In this video, we explore the fascinating story of Christopher Nolan and his latest film. Additionally, we delve into the life of Julius Robert Oppenheimer, known as the father of the atomic bomb. He directed the Manhattan Project, leading to the creation of the first nuclear weapons. Born in 1904 to a German-Jewish family in New York City, Oppenheimer displayed signs of brilliance from an early age. A prodigy from a young age, he mastered high-level physics and chemistry by the age of 10. His knowledge of mineralogy was exceptional, earning him an invitation to lecture at New York's Mineralogical Club when he was just 12. Swiftly advancing, he completed his four-year Harvard degree in three years, excelling in various subjects like physics, philosophy, literature, and Eastern religion. Yet, amidst his brilliance, his true passion was revealed to be physics. At 23, he achieved his PhD. However, behind this genius lay a dark side. Oppenheimer's friends noticed self-destructive tendencies, with him being a chain smoker and battling depression. He once confided in his brother, expressing his need for physics above all else. His focus on studies made him oblivious to world events until the rise of Adolf Hitler in the early 1930s. The atrocities against German Jewish scientists fleeing to America, including luminaries like Einstein, von Neumann, Szilard, Beta, promptly, the president formed an advisory committee on uranium, which led to the creation of a team of scientists and military officials. Their task was to explore uranium's weapon potential, research nuclear chain reactions, and develop methods to separate uranium isotopes. The government's funding supported Enrico Fermi and Leo Szilard in this crucial endeavor. The hurdle was that naturally occurring uranium on Earth consists mostly of the U-238 isotope, with less than 1% U-235. Only U-235 could be used for the bomb. The scientists' primary challenge was to enrich U-235 from U-238. Interestingly, the scientists were instructed not to share details with Albert Einstein due to his perceived left-wing ideology, which was seen as a potential security risk. It's worth noting that Einstein valued sleep, recognizing its significance, and strategically took daytime naps. In December 1940, Oppenheimer and a team of scientists, including Edward Teller, were conducting independent research on nuclear fission. During this time, they discovered another radioactive element, plutonium, which could potentially be used for nuclear weapons. On October 11, 1941, the American president proposed collaboration with British Prime Minister Winston Churchill on atomic development. Shortly after, on December 7, 1941, Japan's attack on Pearl Harbor officially drew America into World War II. A state of war has existed between the United States and the Japanese Empire, declared President Roosevelt, marking America's entry into the Allied powers against Germany and Japan. The scientific endeavor of developing nuclear weapons had now transformed into a military mission. The US invested $2 billion in this pursuit. Taking inflation into account, the $2 billion invested in the nuclear project equates to approximately $24 billion today or almost. President Roosevelt approved the involvement of the Army Corps of Engineers, which was responsible for constructing ports and airfields for the Army, in June 1942. Their headquarters, known as the Manhattan Engineer District, was established on the 18th floor of a building in Manhattan, New York City. This marked the official commencement of the Manhattan Project on August 13, 1942. 
Colonel Leslie Richard Groves was appointed as the project's head on September 17 of the same year. Groves chose Oppenheimer to lead the atomic bomb's design. For secrecy, the project was established in Oak Ridge, Tennessee, known as the Secret City. Thousands of scientists and workers were assigned the task of creating uranium-235 from uranium-238. Uranium-238 is not highly fissionable, meaning it cannot sustain a chain reaction to create a bomb. The extraction of uranium-235 was crucial as only U-235 could undergo a chain reaction, making it essential for the bomb. The project explored four methods for obtaining U-235 from U-238, gaseous diffusion, centrifuge, electromagnetic separation, and liquid thermal diffusion. Among these, electromagnetic separation and gaseous diffusion proved successful to some extent. Electromagnetic separation involved using a large magnet to separate U-235 from U-238, while gaseous diffusion passed uranium hexafluoride gas through a porous membrane, allowing the lighter U-235 molecules to pass through and filtering out the heavier U-238 molecules. In addition to the work on uranium-235, scientists in Washington were also producing plutonium, obtained from uranium-238 through hydrogen isotope bombardment. Plutonium was discovered to be more radioactive and fissionable than uranium-235. Alongside these efforts, they sought a third location, known as Project Y, for designing and creating the bombs. General Groves desired a remote and secretive site, and Oppenheimer had the perfect location in mind. Having set up various locations, Oppenheimer found solace in the scenic Pecos Valley in New Mexico. With all preparations in place, one critical task remained, practical testing of a chain reaction. On December 2, 1942, scientist Enrico Fermi accomplished the first successful experiment. In a University of Chicago squash court, he initiated a chain reaction, illuminating a bulb. The clickety-clack of instruments confirmed the achievement of the first human-made nuclear chain reaction. General Groves recognized Oppenheimer's exceptional abilities and considered appointing him as the director of Project Y. However, some senior military members expressed doubts due to Oppenheimer's association with friends, including his wife and brother, who were strong proponents of communism. General Groves stood by Oppenheimer, emphasizing that the project run fat man. Little Boy relied on uranium-235 and featured a gun-type design. Two subcritical masses of uranium-235 were combined rapidly to reach the critical mass, initiating a fission chain reaction and causing an explosion. On the other hand, Fat Man utilized plutonium-239, posing a more challenging design. Unlike Little Boy, it couldn't be a gun-type design, as combining two plutonium masses would cause the fission reaction to cease before reaching the critical mass. The initial idea of a plutonium gun bomb was found impractical as it would melt, not explode. Instead, scientists devised a different design called the implosion method. In this approach, a subcritical mass of plutonium was placed inside a hollow sphere. Surrounding explosives caused an implosion, compressing the plutonium to high pressure, reaching the critical mass. This method was crucial for the plutonium bomb's success. Oppenheimer emphasized the need for thorough testing before implementing it in the actual bomb. Initially, General Groves hesitated to conduct a test due to the limited plutonium supply. However, Oppenheimer insisted on its necessity, and eventually, General Groves agreed. The Trinity test took place in the New Mexico desert, where a test nuclear bomb called Gadget was dropped, containing 13 pounds of plutonium. The bomb was hung 100 feet in the air using a steel tower, and on July 16, 1945, at 5.30 am, it was detonated. The bomb proved to be far more powerful than Oppenheimer had anticipated. Following the bomb blast, the steel tower completely evaporated, leaving behind mildly radioactive green-colored glass known as Trinitite. Witnessing this devastating sight, Oppenheimer recited lines from the Bhagavad Gita, Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. 
Oppenheimer was well versed in Sanskrit and considered the Bhagavad Gita to be one of the most influential books of his life. Shortly after the Trinity test, on August 6, 1945, the little boy bomb was dropped on Hiroshima, followed by the fat man bomb on Nagasaki three days later. Upon hearing the news, Albert Einstein's initial reaction was one of sorrow, and he made a thought-provoking statement, mankind invented the atomic bomb, but no mouse would ever construct a mousetrap. Oppenheimer, on the other hand, initially expressed contentment when the bomb was used on Hiroshima, hoping it could be utilized against Nazi Germany and Hitler. However, the shock of the Nagasaki bombing left him deeply disturbed. On August 17, he traveled to Washington to hand deliver a letter he had written to the Secretary of War. Oppenheimer openly expressed his desire to ban nuclear weapons, deeply regretting his role in developing the technology handed over to humanity. While he initially viewed the first bomb dropped on Hiroshima as a necessary evil, he grew fearful of the future implications as other countries gained access to this 